Hi everybody, it's Mary at Primitive Seasons. I'm glad you stopped by today. I promised you a video on how to do um, this little card that I had posted on the blog using um, a three-dimensional embellishment. It was a little urn. It's kind of like the um, resin embellishments that you buy from Prima and some of the other companies. But if you've ever used them, you know they're about $5 a piece or sometimes two for $5. And I'm going to show you a little way to um, make them more inexpensively. And therefore, you can use more. So um, we have a lot of products to show today. So I'm going to start with that first. The first thing we're going to be using is a tool that's been around for ages and ages and ages and it is the melting pot by Ranger. This is a pot that gets very very hot so I want to caution you when you're using this if you have small children about to be careful not to let them get near it and be careful yourself because you can get a bad burn from this. Now um, what you use in the pot that you're going to melt to make these things is a product called UD and UD stands for ultra thick embossing enamel it comes in the clear which is what this is it comes in white it also comes in black and I believe it might come in colors I'm not sure about that this is I think an 8 ounce jar it comes in a 4 ounce jar it also comes in a pound canister so if you get into this and you really like it um, it's it's less expensive to buy the larger amount just like anything you'd buy in the grocery store okay so we use that and then we're going to use molds and for pouring our shapes this is one the one that has the urns in it that I, sh I showed you on the card this I just got it's from a company called Katie Sue designs I think you can read that this is company is from um, the UK and they're very nice molds as you can see they're very thick a lot of good detail on these molds and it, they come out very very well the finished pieces um, because they're in the UK and probably shipping to the United States is more expensive they do have a US distributor where I mean you can get the piece within a few days but I think because they're expensive to ship these molds are rather pricey just this one I think was eighteen dollars including the shipping Martha Stewart has quite a big line of molds out she uses them for her own clay um, same process you push the clay into the mold and pop it out when it's done this is from the Halloween line these are also very nice and thick and they work very well for this process that's one this is cherries and a leaf this is a nice rose one that would look great on um, some cards or scrapbook pages this is another this could be a button or it could also be a smaller flower here's a strawberry because the strawberry is a little deeper the mold is slightly thicker okay and then here's another one from the Halloween series which is the owl and in Michaels and Joann's you can also find in the polymer clay aisle some molds that look they're the yellow color that look like this they're a little different they're not solid on the back they do work but it requires a little more finesse in the pouring because they tend to seem that the um, melted beauty comes over the um, edge of the mold that's not something you have to worry about when you're beginning because the pouring takes a little time to learn not much because if you have UD that flows over the edge when you pop the mold out you can um, cut that excess off with a pair of scissors or with an exacto knife something like that it's very easy to take care of now I filled the pot um, with some beauty earlier and excuse my arm just like anything else like I've melted beeswax in this and um, it's kind of like this is a mixture I have in here of the white and the clear and the reason I like that is I like vintage look a lot and this comes out more of a um, an ivory color 
rather than clear or all white. After it's in here, after you pour your UD in and you just want to shake some towards the back and it'll be crystalline when you first see it, put the lid on and let it sit for about five minutes. You push your little marker, the setting that's all the way to the right is the UD setting. Um, like I said, you can use beeswax. You can even use this to bake polymer clay pieces if any of you are into polymer clay. Okay, so now we're going to pour. I'll show you how easy it is. I hope I can get this on camera right. I'm going to have to do it backwards. Now you're going to let your UD flow down the pan. You go kind of slow with it and then you're going to pour into the mold and let it fill. You can kind of go over to make sure you get all the areas. Let it drip off. And then we'll do this one here so you can see the process again. And it, you know, it, it works really easy. I mean, it fills in real well and let it drip. Okay, put your lid back on. If you're going to continue to pour, and what I would suggest is that if you like this and you're going to continue to do this, I would say to um, do a lot at one time. Don't heat the pot up and go through all that just for one mold. I would say do you know, you don't have to do the same mold over and over, but do half a dozen pieces to make it worth your while. Now we're going to push that away and let that sit for about five minutes um, while we talk about some other things. The other thing you can do with the hot UD is that if you don't want to paint the finished piece, they have these um, melt art um, inks that you can put right in with the melted UD in the pot. And you can um, add color to it, you know, right away. Now, I would say that it's, let's say you do a pumpkin. And you put some rust-colored ink in with the Melted Beauty. So then the whole pumpkin, including the stem, will be the rust color. But then you can take it out and just color your stem brown or green or whatever you want. So these kind of come in handy and they come about, um, I would say maybe 18 or 20 different colors. Now, here's a little piece of the one that we just poured. You can see how good the detail is. And this one poured really well. It doesn't have any excess over it. Now, if you want to know how did I get from this into that color. It's kind of like a vertigris color. So what I did was you can use any turquoise color paint. I used Evergreen Bow on the Distress Paint and I just used a fine brush, painted it over that and let that dry. Then when that was done, I used, um, you can use, let me see if I can find that which I can't write this moment. Oh, here it is. You can use Rub and Buff, which has been around for eons. This was the antique gold, I think. As you can see, it's well used. This is just basically a wax, a finishing wax, that you just take your finger and rub on the piece when the paint is dry. You can also use the Inca Gold, which a lot of people are familiar with today. It comes in a container like this. Again, uh, they're seven dollars a container I think seven or eight use your coupons at Michael's Michael's have a pretty good line of this I don't think Joanne has it it comes in copper and silver and all kinds of colors but I like the gold and the copper the best depends on you know what you're going to use so after you do that let me show you some of the other molds that I've done um, and what I did we, you know we looked at this one so here is a face of a moon, the face. Um, clear, you know, the white shows on the back. Same thing. I just, um, I think this one I just used the gold rub on. Rub it on. When it's dry, take a paper towel and just buff it off on a towel or a tissue, whatever. And if you have problems, again, on, for instance, this mold, when you're painting and you can't get the paint in all those little nooks and crannies, just take um, either a paintbrush or um, I found these wonderful Q-tips at CVS Pharmacy. And they're kind of like a paddle shape on one end, but the other end, which is kind of magical, is pointed. 
and it really helps to get in all those you know little areas so they're kind of great then I did a leaf and I really love this this was a Martha Stewart mold and when this came out I painted it brown and then when that was dry I used green over that and then I used the gold and the copper in the Inca gold to highlight that so it has some shimmer to it here's the plain little terracotta pot that was in that mold of all the urns and then to go with your fall leaf little acorns again that's a Martha Stewart here's like the skinny moon with the gold and then here's a pumpkin this is a Martha Stewart um, they're very dimensional as you can see but of course they all have a flat back and I did you know the gold on that one okay so we've talked about coloring and whatnot let me show you one difference this is a second card I made before this video this is the one that's on the blog and I haven't posted this one yet but they both use the same urn but I don't know if you noticed it's not too noticeable on top of the the urn itself you have a little bit of a lip that's the edge so you want to make it look like the flowers are coming out of the pot I wasn't as successful with this card doing that but I only used one layer of leaves and flowers now on this card what I did was I made extra leaves and flowers and yes they're not going to show but it gives you that fuller effect I put flowers later all across here and then I put flowers on top of that so the the um, ledge effect is not quite as pronounced it gives you a nice full bouquet of flowers and the um, punches that I use for the flowers are Martha Stewart I use the hydrangea punch that's this one as you can see and this one is just um, I don't know what her name for it is it's just a five petal flower punch and then for the leaves and one point about tip about the leaves is um, I think this is the rose leaf and I don't know what the other one's called um, try to vary the greens that you use um, for the foliage part of it it gives a more natural look and then what I did with all the pieces my um, flowers here's a couple just kind of show you here um, I edged the leaves in some distress ink same thing with the flowers I put a little distress ink on the edges I think I used spun sugar on this very um, pale pink and then on the leaves I used I think it was forest moth forest moss hmm, can't talk today anyhow um, that's you know what the leaves look finished now <clears throat> You're all familiar with the dyes that are out nowadays to do um, flowers with. And what I did with mine, um, Susan, what's her name, who makes all the flower dyes. These are the tools I used with the flowers. This one is her one of her tools. Um, it's kind of like a stylus. It has a larger ball on one end and a smaller ball on this end. And what you want to do is take your, let me bring the focus down a little bit. You want to take your flower with the ball and go around and around and around on a foam mat. You could even use um, a mouse pad. And what that does is that it curls um, the flower up. Can you see that? Okay. And then you want to take, like, let me find one that's empty if I have one. You do the same thing with the larger flower. You can even use the larger ball. And that one I curved up one way. This one you can do another. You can redo it if you don't like it. And then there's a new little tool out. Actually, it hasn't been out. Let me see if it's a little hard to get open. Oh, my. Oh, why can't I open that? Anyway, it's called a quick stick. And one end is a point and the other end has this kind of green material in it 
that is sticky. And what you can do is use it to pick up your tiny, tiny little parts and stick them, there it goes, stick them onto your flower center. And then you can use the pointed end to position it or whatever. So I just used um, whatever paper glue you like. I just put a dot in the center of the glue. And this is my favorite paper glue. It's the Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. Everybody has their own favorite that they like as far as adhesives are concerned. But you just put a dot in the center, put the other one on top of that another dot and then the tiniest one, the darkest one in the center, and then you place those. Now when I, when I, I'm no floral designer, but when I do um, this, what I do is I start out, I put a large flower in the center bottom, and then I put maybe another one up in this side, another one up in this side. Then I start to fill in with my greens. I also um, texturize and make some dimension to the greens that way. I think it's more natural looking. Then I go back and fill in with this middle size flower, maybe add some more greens. And then the last step is that I put these little tiny baby flowers in. And I try to have some of this come over the edge of the pot. This one has quite a bit. Um, so that it looks natural and that you don't see that lip on the, on the pot itself. Um, it's a fun thing to do with these urns, especially I can picture in the fall making one of these and then putting little pumpkins in either paper or the um, beauty pumpkins with grasses or something like that. It's it's very, you know, wide range of things you can do with this. It's a lot of fun. So <clears throat> as a final step, let's go back and look at the molds that we poured. Now, the way you'll know that they're ready to come out, you see here that that's hard. You can tell that. And all it takes is to bend the mold and pop it out. Bend the mold and it'll pop right out. And if you have any little pieces that aren't the way they should be, now these came out pretty good. And like I said, You'll get better at it if you do it one or two times. I would say it only takes a time or two to get used to the pouring process. But there's anything you can make with these. There is also another product that Ranger makes called Mold and Pour. Let's say you have a very fancy antique button and you'd like to copy that button to use. Well, this is a um, epoxy product. Comes the two jars. On a, on a card. Michaels has it, Joann's doesn't, to my knowledge. And what you want to do is you want to mix fairly even amounts of the two of these. And you're going to knead it together just like you would clay until it's mixed really, really well. Because one of them is white and one is, is a color. So you'll know as it achieves the one color that it's ready. And then you just sit it down and if you want to make a button, you want to press the button into the mold and then kind of curve it up around and you let it sit for five minutes. And in five minutes, you got a whole bunch of buttons, <laughs> at least one to start. But um, that's called mold and pour. And um, so that's another product in this line with what is now known as melt art. And if you want to see some more examples of this, my Pinterest page has a board called Melt Art, and it shows a lot of examples. Um, and there's videos on there by Suze Weinberg, who is the lady who has taken this to another level. She's a teacher for Ranger, and um, she um, has done several really good videos. One of them with Tim Holtz to tell the, about this whole process, and she shows making some jewelry pieces, which are just outstanding. There's so much you can do with it. Well, thanks today for stopping by. I don't know what the next video will be or when it will be, but I hope you'll come back and join me again. Thanks so much for coming by. Have a great day.